four minutes. Thanks so much, Mr. Chair. Um, in, and thank you to uh, to you, Ms. Roper, Mr. Uh, Casola, and uh, uh, Mr. Morley for joining us today and for being so great with all these questions. Uh, in my writing uh, of Davenport, uh, it's very clear to the constituents here that they want to make sure that we don't, we as a national government, don't reduce our focus on climate change and moving to more sustainable, low carbon economy. So I have two questions related to this. One is, how are you ensuring that you're picking projects that will help Canada become more sustainable, so that's one. Two, as you're picking infrastructure projects to invest in, how do you assess the risks that represent climate change, and, and how does the bank plan to mitigate uh, those climate risks? So I'll, I'll start, and Annie, if you want to chip in, um, that, that's great. Uh, very much, thank you for the question, very much a focus of everything that we do. Um, uh, we are actively involved, uh, to build on Ms. May's question, actively involved uh, in interties, in transmission to the north, anything that, that results in off-diesel um, for uh, remote communities is, is a good thing, and we're actively exploring models for that. Um, we are looking at renewable projects where... Uh, um, where it makes sense to do so. In other words, if there's a funding model in the market where they can get private sector capital, they don't need us. But there are instances where some of the risks involved do need us because of the peculiarities of the market and so on. We have a funding project in uh, Pirate Harbor, wind, uh, wind farm in Nova Scotia, which really uh, the main benefit of that project is it helps to balance the Nova Scotia grid and provide more reliable power to that entire province. Um, the lens goes beyond renewable projects. We're looking at storage projects, um, battery, pump storage, all types of projects across the country. In addition, even when we're looking at transit projects, we're always looking at the option of electrification as well as, I mean, and there's always a cost trade-off, obviously, and those are policy decisions that public sponsors will need to make, but we always put those options on the table for consideration and try and get some measure through external validation of GHG reductions, value, and everything has a value and everything, you know, everything has a cost. And so we view it very much as our job to do the work to put good and valid um, uh, uh, options on the table for all of the levels of government with which we collaborate. Thank you. Anything else to add, Ms. Roper, or can I go to my last question? No, not, nothing to add there. Thank you. Perfect. And this is actually a question that uh, our chair raised. I think there was some confusion around subsidy versus loan. And is this sort of the right moment maybe for someone to clarify? Just because I think we started off with grants, then we moved to subsidy, then we moved to loans, then we moved to subsidy. So can you maybe uh, provide a very clear definition of what it is that we're actually providing uh, in terms of loans or subsidies? If you could just be clear on that, that'd be uh, helpful. John, I can I can start that, John, sure. if you wanted to, to sure. step in. So I, th I think, yes, I agree. But I think a lot of terms and terminology are sort of being mixed in together. A, a loan is a type of product, obviously, that we would uh, contribute to a project and that could have, you know, varying levels of, of an interest rate attached to it. But that is just one uh, product, if I can call it that, or one type of instrument that we can actually use. As, as we mentioned before, we can use equity, we can use some other form of financial instrument to contribute and fill the gap in the capital structure in that project. Um, so I think that's, you know, that's kind of how we frame what is our opportunity set on the things that we can offer to a specific project. If, if I could just make one uh, one short comment to add to that. I think it's important to separate the actual capital that we provide, the big number of dollars with the interest rate or the return that, that we charge interest rate prior. The actual capital take, taking, you know, the REM as an example is roughly $1.3 billion. That is not a subsidy. That is not a grant. That is a repayable loan. Um, where, where the subsidy portion of it may come in is if we charge an interest rate of 1% where they should have been paying 3% or 4% if they went to the market, the difference between the 1% and the 4 could be characterized as potentially as a subsidy, but that doesn't negate the fact that using that structure, we still get the $1.3 billion back when you wouldn't in a full grant scenario. So I'll just leave it at that. Perfect. 